After you've opened up your SPSS program, go down to the bottom and click on Variable View. This is the page where you're going to name your variables and tell the computer what kind of variables they are. With our super rat study, we only have one IV, and that IV is which group each of the rats is in. So now we have to tell the computer what type of variable our IV is. So the first column is type. The second column is width. That number tells you how many characters you can have in the name of your variable. The third column is decimals. How many place values do you want your values to go out to? Under the label column, you can go ahead and give your IV any other name that you'd like. Since our only IV is which group each rat is in, we're going to go ahead and label it groups. So when we see that word groups, we know we're talking about the first IV, the only IV. In the values column, we're going to go ahead and identify each one of the groups with a number and then give it a name associated with that number. So starting with the control group, we're going to click the cursor into the value box, type in 1, and then click the cursor into the label box, and we're going to go ahead and name this control group, and then we click add. Repeat the process with group number 2, type a 2 in the value box, and the label we're going to call this super rat serum low dose, click add. And repeat the process for all of the groups. So we're going to do three, four, five. We're going to go ahead and double check and make sure every group has its own number. Good to go. Under the measures column, we need to identify what type of variable we're using here. The first one says scale. That means it's a, it's a regular number, like weight or height or shoe size. The second one is ordinal. That's talking about order. Is your data in an order type form? The last one is nominal. That means categorical variable, and that's what ours is. Every, every one of the rats is in one specific category. So we're going to switch that to nominal. Now we're going to create the dependent variable. We're just going to label it dv. We're just going to set the decimals to zero. We just want whole numbers in this practice problem. And let's label it score on their super rat scale. Don't need any values because there's just one of them. But we do need to go to the measures column and make this a scale variable because we're using real numbers. Now we need to enter the data. So go down to the bottom left, click on data view, and we'll start typing in some data. Under IV, we need to type in five ones because there were five rats in group one. We need to type five twos because there were five rats in group two, etc., etc., etc. There were five rats in each of the five groups. So we're going to have five ones, five twos, five threes, five fours, five fives. That's going to be the first part, all under IV, which tells us which group that rat was in. Let's take a quick look at the data from the original study. There's the control group, the super serum groups, and the suppressant groups. We're just going to go ahead and enter that data for each specific group. Now that all the DV information has been entered to its corresponding group number, it's time to let SPSS do our one-way ANOVA for us. Go to Analyze. Scroll down to General Linear Model. And because we only have one DV, we're going to click on the univariate. In this box, we're going to identify which is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable. So go ahead and click on the score on the super rat scale, that's our DV. Click it over to the dependent variable box. And then click on the groups, that's our IV, and put that in the fixed factor box. Next, we need to pick a post hoc test or two. So go ahead and click on the post hoc button. When this box pops up, click the IV and move it over to the box on the right. Once you do that, all the buttons ungray themselves and you simply click on which of the post hoc tests that you want. 
we're just going to go ahead and just do one. We're going to do the two key test and then click continue. Now click the options button. There you're going to click on overall, hit the little arrow button, move it over to the display means for box. And we're going to click the descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, always important, and the homogeneity tests. Those are the ones we're going to use. Go ahead and click continue. Go ahead and click OK. And then it takes us to the output sheet, which is a .sav file. Interpretation time. This first box, the between subject factors, identifies the IV. In this problem, it's groups and all the levels of the first IV. So we have group one, group two, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. And then each of the groups, we put a, a name on, and it tells you how many subjects are in each group. This next box is the descriptive statistics that we ordered. And you'll see that it splits them up into each of the little subgroups where we could see the mean for each of the groups, right? There's the control group, the super rat serum, low dose, et cetera, et cetera. It also does the standard deviation for each of the groups and the number of rats per group. This next box is the Levine's test for the homogeneity of variance. Very important. If that number under the box where it says SIG is less than 0.05, then you have broken the assumption of the homogeneity of variance rule. That means you cannot use this ANOVA as is. So remember again, if that number under SIG is less than 0.05, then you broke the law when it comes to homogeneity of variance. But you'll notice ours is much greater than 0.05, so we're okay when it comes to the homogeneity of variance. All right, this big box is the actual ANOVA. So we're going to go down to find our IV. Forget the sum of squares. Forget the degrees of freedom. We're just going out to where it says SIG, significance. That's the same as a p-value. So in other words, if it's less than 0.05, then that means there is a significant difference somewhere within those groups. And ours is less than 0.05. Now to the Tukey's post hoc test, what it does is it compares each group to every other group to see if there's a significant difference in there somewhere. So starting with the control group, you go over to the SIG column, and you'll notice that all, they all are less than 0 0.05, which means there's a significant difference between the control group and all the other four listed there. But you'll notice the significance is greater than 0 0.05 only with the rat suppressant group. So according to this data, there is no significant difference between the high and low doses of the rat suppressant group. And that's how you do this one-way ANOVA on SPSS. Hope you enjoyed it. MGZ out.